Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, greetings once again. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I am so glad you could join us this week. We're going to be continuing with our very special presentation, hopefully concluding it this week, uh, for the uh, Pastor Keith Moore's message on the power of the tongue. And I am encouraging you to watch both last week's netcast and this week's netcast to get the full message. This is such an important message for the body of Christ. Right now, more than ever, we need to commit to the Word of God and to the power of our tongue, and you need to see this message. Now let me remind you that we have a new service available, and that is through your Roku box. If you have a Roku, R-O-K-U, Roku box, if you go to our website, wofm.org, down in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see a bright red, what looks like an advertisement or a banner. Click on that, and it will take you to uh, the Roku.com site where you can buy a Roku box. They're as low as $49, and that includes the shipping. Now, the reason I mention that is, once you get your Roku box, you create a Roku account on their website, that will be your owner account that will be tied to your Roku. And then you can put in this special code right here on the screen, SFTV Beta, B-E-T-A, right there as it is shown on the screen. You put in that string into your uh, uh, box there on your Roku account, and it will enable the SpeakFaith.tv channel for your Roku, and you can watch these videos and videos from Faith and Victory Church right through your Roku on your giant HD TV if you have one. Hey, hey man, isn't that cool? So take advantage of that, do that, and it will be a blessing for you and your family. And Brother Copeland is out there with his own channel. There's just tons of great channels teaching the Word of God out there. So take advantage of that. Now let's go directly into the message the conclusion of the message by Pastor Keith Moore. Presu you did it presumptuously. I saw an interesting definition of this last night in my study. Presumptuous means, among other things, proud, arrogant, insolent. But listen to this definition. Unwarranted boldness. Now that really tells us something, doesn't it? Were they bold to go up and take the land? Were they making bold statements of confession about they're going to take it? But it was unwarranted boldness because the Lord told them something different. See, this will answer so many questions. We, we, we got folks in our circles that they learned about faith and confession and they've been making confessions and saying and doing some things, but have had some things that didn't work. And it didn't turn out right. And some people in their ignorance, they get angry at God. And go, well, Lord, I said that, I said that, I said that. Why didn't it come to pass? Yeah, but what did he tell you to say? Right. What did he, he tell you to say? See, just because something is generally the will of God doesn't mean he told you to say that now. It was the will of God for them to go into the promised land, wasn't it? It was the will of God for them to possess the land that flowed with milk and honey. That was the will of God. No question about it. And you would think, well, they're just saying the will of God. Yeah, but because of their rebellion and disobedience, he's now told them something else. And you can't ignore what he told you. The Spirit of God said something to you. He brought one verse to you. You can't take another verse and confess that and ignore what the Lord just told you. Can you see this, friends? I know uh, one of the first times I began to learn this, I was working in Brother Hagin's ministry, and when we had counselors on the phone, and I was one of them, 
and people called in for prayer and help. And this lady called in one day just sobbing, weeping. I couldn't tell what she was saying. And she's from up northeast. And, and finally, I, she, I understood that she said that she had just gotten mugged that morning. In a large city, some yahoo came, knocked her in the head, and grabbed her purse and took off with it. Well, and, and I'm searching my heart how to comfort her, how to try to help her. But, but she began to say that wasn't a, her losing her purse and her money and stuff. I asked her, is she okay? And she said, yeah, she's got a bruise and this and that, but she's, she's okay. But the thing she couldn't understand is how this could happen to her. Because she's a believer. And she confessed virtually every morning. The things from the 91st Psalm. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. No evil will befall me. Nothing will touch me. How could this happen, she said. Well, let's, let's analyze that. Who's she irritated at? She don't even know me. Who, who's she annoyed at? She's annoyed at God. The, even though it's not spoken, it's not said, the implication is, God, where were you? Why didn't you intervene? Why did you, how come you let this happen to me? I'm a believer. And she just said it and started crying and sobbing again. She said, how, how come this to happen? And she quoted this 91st Psalm to me about how many times she had said it. And, and I didn't know. I'm sitting there on the phone thinking, Lord, how can I help this lady? And I'm just searching my heart. Lord, what can I say? I don't know. Why? And a couple of questions begin to come up in me to ask her, and she calmed down a little bit. I said, well, what were you doing that, uh, this morning and last night? T tell me something, you, anything that led up to this. And, and um, she got quiet. And she said, well, I said, what, wh did you need to be there? What were you doing? What was going on? She got real quiet. She said, well, actually, I had a check about going. I said, you had a check? She said, yeah, I had a, a, a check about don't go down there. Don't go that part of town today. She said, but I just begin to quote the 91st Psalm. I begin to say, I dwell in the secret place of the most. Well, she, she talking about the Lord didn't protect her. He was trying to protect her. Come on, can you see that? He was telling her, don't go. And what if she hadn't gone? She would have never known about any of this because it wouldn't have happened right. and the question would have never come up. Right. You're right. And I begin to see it. People are adamant about making a confession and all the while are ignoring the leading of the Spirit. Mm. That does not work no. because the, Lord, the leading of the Spirit is the Lord too. Yes. Right. Same one that wrote this book mm. is in you. And if he's leading you and directing you something, you can't quote something he said to him. Instead, the Spirit of God is telling you, don't go downtown. And you say, well, I'm going to quote something to you that you said, Holy Spirit. You said, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Holy Ghost said, yeah, I know I was there when I said that. And I'm telling you, don't go downtown. You say, yeah, I know that, but no evil shall befall me. And Holy Ghost says, yes, I know. I said it. But I'm also telling you, don't go downtown today. <laughs> Can you see this, friends? So here they are going, we're going to go take the land. We're going to go take. The there was a time they should have been saying, we're going to go take the land. But now some things have changed and the Lord's told them something else. And their confession, as good as it sounds, is blatant rebellion. Amen. Uh, unwarranted boldness. Go with me to uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Isaiah 14. When words contradict God's words... When they collide with his, what happens? Are there any words more powerful than his? No. We can check some with somebody that has close personal experience about this. The devil. <laughs> the devil was not created the devil. 
He's, an, he's a fallen angel. There was a time when he was in the presence of the Almighty, experienced the holiness of God, and saw the glory and, and, and the operation of God and the things that he was doing. And of course, God has always operated by believing and saying. And the devil saw this, and in his distortion, he decides he's going to use this against God. God who created believing and saying. He's going to take believing and saying and use it against God who created believing and saying. That just sounds dumb, don't it? And you sit right here in Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and what is it? Uh, 12. He said, how are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Verse 13, for you have said in your heart. What did the devil say? Listen to what the devil said and what he tried to do. He said, Come on, put, put yourself, there was a day back long ago that an angel decided he's going to say something in faith, contrary to God, his creator. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. What's he trying to do? What's he trying to do? Oh, he's, he's trying to believe in his heart and say with his mouth and have what he says. Because he knows this is how it works. He's watched God do it. We don't know how long. He knows God gets it inside him. God says it and it happens. It is. Nobody tempted him to do this. He came up with this on his own. He decides he's going to say it and he's going to rise up. He's already in the presence of God. How come he didn't have enough sense to go, I'm blessed. I am going to get to stay in the presence of Jehovah. I'm going to sing my song. I'm going to do my thing. No, that wasn't enough for him. He got to look and thinking, I will ascend from where I am. I will go up higher than anybody's ever. I'll go over above all the stars. I will be like the most high. And God decided he had to say something about that. Next verse. He said, you will be brought down to hell and to the sides of the pit. Can you see a war of words? The devil is spouting these words out, and God says, you ain't going up. You're going down. And when those words clashed, there's no struggle. How many know there ain't no chance of the devil ever ascending? above and being just like the uh, ain't never gonna happen. But these words that God said, you're going to hell. That's it. He's on his way right now. It's just a matter of time with all these things transpire. Would you agree that you never want to be in that position? That you're saying things that are actually contrary to what he has said. You do not want to be, put yourself in that position. Go with me to the book of John, please. 
John 14. <coughs> there is no better example of faith and confession than Jesus, our Lord. How many think He is the best example of having faith and making a confession that you could ever follow? How did He do it? How did Jesus make confessions? How did He order His speech and the way He spoke? John 14, John 14, 10, He said, Believe this thou not that I'm in the Father and, and the Father in me. The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself. Did He speak His own words? Did he just say anything he decided to say, or anything that crossed his mind? Can you see he was very disciplined about what he said? He said, I don't speak of myself. Say it out loud, I speak not of myself. That means from his self as a source. What he's saying didn't come from him, he said. But the Father that dwells in me, that's where I'm getting what I'm saying. So in that case, what is he saying? What is his confession? The same thing. Come on, can you see that? He's saying the same thing the Father said. Amen. Look with me at the 12th chapter, back up to 12, John 12 and 49. Jesus said it like this, I have not spoken of myself or from myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment about what? what? What what commandment did the Father give him? About what I should say and what I should speak. He's not saying his own words. He's not just saying what he thinks he wants or what crosses his mind or what other people is saying. Can you see? He is very disciplined about what he's saying. Why are people of God saying, 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 and it's not happening? Because they spoke too quickly. They started saying too quickly. What do you mean? The Bible says be quick to hear and what? Slow to speak. What does that mean? You may think you know what to say, but don't just go by what you think. Don't trust in your own understanding. Trust the Lord in your heart. Amen. And even though you might have said a different thing, uh, the same thing two or three times and it worked, every day is a new day. And the Lord knows things you don't know. And His Word is true and you should speak according to the Word, but it's a big book. Which verse are you going to speak according to? And you don't just pick something at random and wind up saying something contrary to what He said for you for now. There's case after case where things have come up and the first thing we ought to do is start checking our heart going, Lord, what do you say? Amen. What do you say over this? That's what I should say. Right. And you may not know the next 30 minutes. You may not know the next 30 days. Right. Did you hear me, friends? Yes. But if you'll wait on Him and look to Him, He'll bring to your remembrance something from the Word. He'll say something to you by the Spirit. And when He does, you won't have to ask. It's quickening. It quickens you. And you just know this is it. This is it. This is it. Now when you start saying that, and you say that in faith, now you're not just saying something, you're saying the same thing that he has said over it, and nobody's bigger than him, and he does back his word, and it'll come to pass. It'll come to pass. Jesus said, I've not spoken of myself, verse 49, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say. And what I should speak. See, people have endeavored to operate intellectually instead of spiritually. If anybody ever comes out with a thousand volume set on what to say in every situation, don't buy it. <laughs> don't get it. 
Because if you could have got by with a thousand or a ten thousand volume set, you wouldn't have needed the Holy Spirit. There's only one way to know. Don't just get, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to have some confession lists and some things, but don't get locked into lists and stuff and technical wrote responses and say, well, I got this, so what verses are on this area? No, there's a specific thing from the Lord. And the only way you know that, we, 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 we're not just living legalistic lives the living Spirit of God Amen. is in us. We're supposed to have a relationship with Him. And if we are, then we, we can hear from Him about specific individual things. I'm not talking about hearing voices or seeing visions, but the Bible said the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit and He will cause us to know. We're not to say just anything. We're to say what he said. Jesus said, he went on to say, verse 50, I know his commandment is life everlasting. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And when we're saying what the Lord told us, commanded us to say, there will be life in that one. Because yes. we're not just saying words we came up with, we're saying his words. Hallelujah. And his words in our mouth is life. Amen in our situation. He said, whatsoever I speak therefore, even as the Father said to me, so I speak. I think situations like where they caught the woman, you know, in the act of adultery and they came, threw her down in front of Jesus and said, the law says stoner, what do you say? You know what he said immediately? Nothing. That's right. Did you notice that? He knelt down and started writing. Why didn't he just say something? It's not like he didn't know some word. Right? Not like he didn't know some scriptures. How many think Jesus could have thought of several scriptures to say? And we have to watch about that. Because just because you know some scriptures don't mean you start rattling some stuff off. When people ask you, you should listen. And be quick to listen. And slow to speak. And, and, and checking in your heart. Okay, Lord, now. What, what is the word for this? What word would you have us to say? What have you already said over this? What are we to say? And look for that. Can you see sometimes people are endeavoring to believe for something and say something, and the reason it's such a struggle is because the Lord's trying to lead them in another direction. He would have had them saying something else and doing something else. Well, yeah, but this is good and it's, it's great. and it's Yeah, but that don't mean it's the will of God for you. Right. Right. <laughs> God wants me to prosper and have good things. He does. God wants me to be healed. He does. But you know, he told Naaman, go dip in the river. Yeah. Right? He didn't like that word. <laughs> he wanted laying on the hands. Didn't he? Yeah. It made him mad, made him fighting mad. He thought, surely I thought, he said, the man of God would come out and strike his hand over the place. And he's leaving, mad, in a huff. Well, is laying on the hands right? It is. Is prayer right? It is. But when the Lord says dip, when the Lord says dip, forget the prayer line. Get the prayer line off of your mind. When the Lord says dip, I don't care who they are, how lovely they are, they are, and how much you wanted them to lay hands on you, forget about their hands. That's right. Forget about it Amen. and go dip. Amen. Go dip. Hallelujah. Can you see how people get in trouble? Because they say, well, I know Scripture, and the Scripture said call for the elders of the church, and they pray over them, and it sure did. But the Scripture also said dip. I also said prayer of agreement, anointing with all, hmm? pray for the sick, and they'll be healed. I mean, there's a lot of different things in there that wind up at the same healing. Which one are you supposed to be saying? There's only one way 
to find out, and that's from him for you. And the thing you ought to be saying is the same thing he's saying. Come on, can you see this? The same thing he's saying. Mm, thank you, Lord. Can you see how some people have been confused? Say, so, well, I did that. I did the laying on of hands. I did the anointing with oil. Yeah, but he told Naaman to go dip. So they're going back to the house. He's mad. Come all this way. That preacher didn't even come see me. He sent his helper out to me. Said the man of God said, go, go dip in the river. What does he think I stink? He <laughs> think I smell? I don't need a bath. We got better rivers in my, my home country than that muddy thing. He's mad. He's upset. Because he knows about laying on the hands. Laying on the hands is right. He's got scripture for it. And prayer. And so I mean that's what you're going to do for me. That's rebellion. That's stubborn. You're going to get in the man of God's face and tell him what he's got to do for you? And how he's got to do for you? You're getting in God's face. You ain't God. You ain't the boss. You ain't in charge. Don't tell him. Ask him. Ask him. Don't tell him. I'm leaving for this. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. What you need to do is ask. Ask. Put your nose in the carpet. Humble yourself. Ask the Lord. Say, Lord, I know healing's your will. I know prosperity is your will. Forgive me for saying and running off half cocked and doing a bunch of stuff. I'm getting quiet. I'm sitting here still. I'm asking you, please, you tell me. What am I to say? And old friend, if you'll do that, you'll begin to hear things that you hadn't got clear on before. It'll begin, and, and, and in just a few months, some things you'll look back and go, oh, no wonder. Oh, man, God, you were so merciful. Oh, I don't even like looking at that. Because you'd be just like them. You're hard. I'm going up the hill. I'm going up the hill. <laughs> Presumptuous, unwarranted boldness. Are you with me, friends? But when you've heard from him, that's when it's time to get bold. Come on now. When you've heard from him, now you can get bold. Now you do declare it. Now you do set yourself and never quit. And it shall come to pass. Can you say glory to God? Everybody stand up. Oh, thank you. Amen. Wasn't that a powerful, powerful message? I'm telling you, I am glad we could showcase this ministry and present it here on the Word of Faith netcast. We're going to be showcasing more ministries in the future and, of course, getting back into teaching the Word right here ourselves. But I tell you what, it's a blessing to be able to share this with you. Now, you can write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. You can also write me here at Dr. Bill, that's my email address, Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at WFM.org. Join us next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.